are talking with John Kazachenko, uh, who has been an activist for some time in the gay lesbian community in Vancouver. Hello, John. Hi, good afternoon. My name is John Kazachenko. I was born and raised in inner city Toronto, McCall Street, in 1955. Uh, my earliest recollections are of uh, being uh, at the, my mother ran a laundromat, King Coin Laundry on McCall Street, uh, which uh, had a lot of the pe people in the community uh, come to their laundry, uh, artists, uh, there was the art college down on McCall Street, students from the University of Toronto. Uh, I was later to find out that the, at the age of 13 that Jerry Moldenhauer of uh, Glad Day Bookstore fame uh, had cruised me when I was 13 years of age. Um, I became politically active uh, at the age of 15 while I was walking uh, in the inner city streets uh, and I uh, uh, was aware of a protest against the Vietnam War. It had been the uh, Kent State uh, shootings that had occurred in May and uh, I uh, witnessed the 52nd Division Police Department riot squad on horseback with their club swinging attack the crowd. And uh, that, uh, that would shock me, and I became politically aware. Shortly afterwards, we had a, uh, educational cutbacks in uh, school spending in the province of Ontario of $13 million, and we had walkouts of the high schools. I attended Harvard Collegiate at that period of time. Uh, my earliest sexual recollections were uh, when I was, uh, my mother always had a place up north, up country, and I would hitchhike into the city and I would get picked up by men while I was hitchhiking. Uh, that was my earliest recollections of having sex with other men. When, you, uh, when did you decide that you were interested in other men? Did you go through a long process of that and well, then try about, it, it out? It took about or? three years. At the age of 14, I didn't actually come out of the closet until I was about 17. Actually, uh, I, I re-met Jerry Maldenhauer in 1972, April 16th, when Nixon came to Ottawa. And we had a protest. Uh, we, we had uh, buses that took us from the Holy Trinity Church downtown Toronto to Ottawa to protest Nixon. And the chat was, if Nixon's normal, we're glad we're queer. I had visited uh, Jerry Moldenhauer's house on Seton Street. Uh, John Size was another person. Don Bell, another individual who were involved at that time. And uh, in over a two-day period, I uh, actually had sex with almost everyone in the house. <laughs> So thus getting the award of Babylon 2. Babylon 2? <laughs> so, as they used to call it, if you had sex with everyone in the house, you were considered Babylon. <laughs> I see. What was your pa parents and your family's political values? Well, my mother was working with? class because she was, the, uh, she was the laundress. She didn't own the laundry. She just managed it. Uh, she was the mistress of the man who owned it, who worked for Ontario Hydro, who had a wife and three kids in a fruit farm in Queenston. Um, I used to visit, I visit them in the summertime, uh, they were older boys, we never did play, but I did watch them uh, jerk off occasionally. So I had a crush on Dan Heap's son uh, when we were in grade six together. As the NDP? Yeah, NDP, uh, Dan uh, Heap's son, who's also name is Daniel, Daniel Heap. So yeah. did you ever tell Dan about yes, this? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, how do you, how do you he's, react he's, to he's that? He's hetero now, but okay. still he's an NDP or so, okay. part of the progressive community. Right. At what point? Did you become politically active on gay issues, and, and how did that come about? Can you give us some more details about that? Well, yes. Um, I had been involved with uh, uh, Gary Kinsman and uh, uh, Walter Davis, and in 1975 I attended the Third National Gay Lesbian Conference in Ottawa. Uh, where I also, we also met people like Charlie Hill and uh, uh, Evergon and Ken Hillis. And we uh, went swimming in, nude, nude swimming in Meech Lake. That was uh, remembrance from 1975. How long did you live out east before you moved out here or before you visited out here for that? Well, I, when I was 16, I hitchhiked across Canada and came here. And I, my 16th birthday was September 19th. So uh, uh, shortly after that, I hitchhiked across Canada and visited Vancouver in October, November, and returned to uh, uh, Toronto that winter. Uh, the next year, I, uh, I hitchhiked out here and also went to Mexico when I was, uh, when I was 17. Was your hitchhiking adventures uh, um, of a sexual nature as yes. well? Yes. Yeah. And how was Mexico for you? 
months ago it was wonderful. I went to San Miguel de Allende, uh, that's a uh, historical town in Mexico, that's uh, Cobblestone Streets. What, what age was that for Mexico? That's when, that's when I was 17, yeah. my first trip. Did you meet any uh, gay activists in Mexico, or was it just no, a gay scene? No, I hadn't scene? met any. You know, it was very the, closeted at the yeah, time in Mexico. I would expect so. Yeah. I just was curious. You were back in Toronto for how I was long? Back in, I went back to Toronto, well, in, uh, let's see, in April, we went to uh, Ottawa in 1972 to, uh, uh, to protest Nixon. And then I came back out here, and that summer I went to, I was in Mexico that, in August that summer, so I was probably here in uh, June or July of 72. And then you settled here at that point? Um, no, I traveled a lot. I, in, in 1975, I went to Ottawa for the conference. In 1977, I went to uh, Central America, Belize and Guatemala. Uh, in 79, I also went to uh, uh, Guatemala. And then in 1979, I had uh, heard this call for the Radical Ferry Gathering, Harry Hay, the first Radical Ferry Gathering in Benson, Arizona. So I attended that gathering in 1979, Benson, Arizona. Harry Hay, John Burnside, his lover, yeah, the Radical Ferries. And uh, was that the first year of That was the first uh, Radical Ferry Gathering, yeah. yes. And, then, and is that where RFD started? Uh, no, RFD had already been existing at uh, in... Uh, Short Mountain, Tennessee, I believe, yes. I had later visited their, uh, their, their uh, farm in Tennessee. So at uh, that point in time, were you um, into drag or, or gender fuck or anything like that? No, not okay. really. Well, Some of those people were, that's why yes, I asked. Yeah, well, <clears throat> uh, at that time, not, not knowing uh, uh, how to uh, actually you know, communicate with other gay people other than meeting them hitchhiking, I discovered that there was a bar called BJ's here, and I had attended uh, uh, BJ's several times. So BJ's was, BJ's was your was first a, bar? Yes. Excellent. First Great place to start. Bar, yeah. Yes. And I also remember the 616 at that time. Was where, where was it, 616? The 616 on, uh, on Robson Street across from the, uh, where the ambassador used to be. That is Robson Street, correct? Yes. And across from there, uh, it's now the India Gate Restaurant. Okay. It used to be, it was 616. So it's across from Faces as well. Yes, yeah. yes. <clears throat> Before Faces existed, mm -hmm. yeah. It used to be the Castle, the Ambassador, 616. Uh, the Thunderbird, which later became the Central. When you first got to Vancouver, how did you connect with the gay community? Uh, when I first got here, I didn't really connect with the gay community uh, other than going to BJ's because it was an obvious gay bar. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, what year was that I used again? to 71. 71. Yeah. Uh, at that time, I used to stay in the youth hostels that mm -hmm. they had at, uh, I believe, just over the Canby Bridge, there used to be a youth hostel. So that was the same time that uh, GLF was here. Did you ever go to that? Uh, uh, I attended a group called... Uh, uh, who was involved in that? Um, it's called Gay Men Together. I know I met Maurice Flood at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there was a social group that met once a week. It was called Gay Men Together? Yeah, I believe yeah. it was. And that pre preceded Gate? Oh, that was at the same time as Gate. Okay, so it was because a I social remember meeting uh, Maurice Flood and his wife Cynthia. And yeah. And uh, did you get involved with Gate at all at that point? Um, I believe I attended one of their protests. Mm -hmm. yeah, they had a protest. They were they were having an issue with the newspaper not allowing uh, Vancouver gay, gay ads. Yeah. 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 What other institutions in the Vancouver gay lesbian community did you become aware of, at, in, in what order? Uh, I had well, I had become a Trotskyist in 1971, so I hung around the uh, Vanguard bookstore. Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you have any instances in your early days of being uh, uh, bashed or, or, or harassed or bullied in school? Um, yeah, there were, there were always the comments about homosexuality, but as far as n no violence, the, the most violence I saw, I remember at one time, every Halloween there used to be an event at the St. Charles in Toronto, and the police would block off the street and all the, you know, the the engineering department of U of T students would uh, be across the street throwing eggs and things. So at one time I was hit by an egg. But that, that was in, that was like 1980, 81. Because we had the bath raids. I was, I was, at, uh, I was at the bathhouse the night before it got raided in 
February 5th, 1981.